philosopher Daniel Dennett described the theory of evolution as the single best idea that anyone has ever had. Now, I can see some people in front. If I cover this, I can see some more people, right? But I'm already starting to see some reactions. I saw something like this. I saw some people sitting a bit farther back. I saw, I saw some people lean forward. Now, why is something like this, a claim such as this, the cause of such emotion inside of people? Because I want to let you know that you're not alone. At least in the United States, this is results from Gallup, the most recent ones we have from 2014, and they extend all the way back to the 1980s. As you can see, a little bit over 40% of people believe in something called creationism. Now, creationism is the thought that the world was created by God and no evolution has occurred. Now, if you look under that, you'll see that a little above 30% believe in what's called something like theistic evolution. That is the thought that evolution happened, but God was somehow involved. If you look right under that, that is called naturalistic evolution, which means evolution happened, but God was not involved. And the interesting thing about this is that this graph only goes up till the 1980s. But as you can see, not much has changed from then to now. And in fact, if you trace it all the way back, you'll see that the controversy is a little bit longer, or longer lived, than you would imagine. So, I want to take a bit of a step back. You all might know this person. This is Charles Darwin, and this is how most people recognize him, right? Old, wise, scraggly beard, always pensive. But the person that most people don't know is Emma Darwin. She was Charles Darwin's wife, and to be able to fully appreciate what they meant to one another, right at this point in their lives, and it, when they first met, we have to go back a little bit farther. We gotta make them a little bit more relatable to the everyday. So let's take that journey really quick. You can see them here in all of their glory. This is right after they got married. These were sort of commemorative paintings that they had made. You can see that they're young, happy, and it looks like in love, right? Well, the incredible thing was that probably a decade after these paintings were painted, Charles Darwin would be publishing on The Origin of Species. And that was a book that as soon as it landed, it caused an incredible amount of controversy. They had to haggle with their own beliefs. Charles Darwin, a little bit before this time, he was studying theology. He was going to be an Anglican clergyman. And Emma Darwin, or who would be Emma Darwin, she was actually a Unitarian. For her, the idea of religion was more akin to the life that you led and who you loved and the fact that the person that you loved would be with you for all of eternity. So you could imagine what a book like On the Origin of Species did to the world and to their relationship. They were attacked by members of every camp, religious, scientific, and the common people. The book was taken and interpreted in a bunch of different ways. But they had a secret because they made it. They made it to old age until death did them part. So the question is, what was their secret to weathering this storm? And to understand this, we're going to have to take a step forward to the recent past, for me at least. Uh, now, this...
that's my roommate. <laughs> you can see that the, the relationship is a bit different, but it's still kind of one-sided. But anyway, he was my roommate freshman year at college. And I just flew over there from Puerto Rico. And I was fresh, a bunch of ideas, really happy to do stuff. And as soon as I got there, I realized, and so did my parents who are in the audience, that he had certain philosophical ideas that were very different from my own, right? So we were wondering, well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and as soon as I spent the first night at the dorms, I was supposed to sleep, but I didn't because him and I stayed up talking essentially all night. It was a fierce amount of philosophy and friendly banter about everyone's beliefs, thoughts, and their past. It was an incredibly eye-opening experience for me, and I would like to think for him as well. I learned a lot, and I took that with me. And then if we fast forward a little bit, my senior year, at my university, I decided that I wanted to take what had been done with him, what we had done together, and sort of expand it a little bit. So in comes my short documentary. I decided that I wanted to take a group of random strangers, except two of them, two of them knew each other, but I essentially went out and found people. And I would hike up a mountain with these people and film them as they talked about their beliefs. And I thought, who better to moderate th this discussion than probably the most unbiased person I know? So I contacted him, my ex-roommate at this point, and he said, sure, I'll do it. So together, we went up to a mountaintop with six other people, and he moderated this talk. And it was fantastic. They were up there for three hours, and the hike up was approximately an hour and a half. So these strangers that didn't know each other at all had an hour and a half to essentially talk to each other, get to know each other enough, and then talk about probably one of the most controversial things ever. And it's really interesting because I would like to think that these people found out Charles and Emma Darwin's secrets. So that brings us right back to both of them. What was Charles and Emma Darwin's secret? It was talking. Now, okay, 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 no, 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 you're all laughing. Okay, wait. <laughs> Let me, let me take a step back. Chill. So, you're all probably thinking right now, did this guy just spend seven and a half minutes telling us a story about this crazy secret, and the secret is talking? The answer is yes, but hold up, okay? <laughs> all right, please, bear with me. So, let me explain. A lot of people claim to be able to talk to each other. They claim to be able to dialogue. They claim to be able to exchange ideas freely. But the problem comes when I put a quote like what I did in the beginning up. As soon as I did that, the majority of you immediately flooded your minds with thoughts, preconceived notions, vitriol, everything. Your past was just coming to attack you at that moment. Some of you were going like, I wonder what he's going to say. Others were like, yeah, kill him. Other people were going like, oh my God, this is going to be really crazy. Some other people were going like, oh man, I want to leave right now. This is a stupid talk. Other people were going like, oh no, I hope he doesn't upend any of my beliefs. There is no God. What I'm saying is, before any of those thoughts, 
past transgressions, beliefs, ideas, ideals, and personal philosophies come into play, I urge all of you to take a step back. Take a step back and recognize that that's all happening and that you're making up your mind before you've even heard what the person has to say. It's not about what you believe. It's about why you believe it. Where do you come from? Where have you been? The fact of the matter is that the biggest ideas, such as the theory of evolution, often have effects at the smallest, most imperceptible scales, interpersonal relationships inside of your mind. And sometimes, the most insignificant thing that you just throw aside, talking, communication, dialogue. Sometimes that is the biggest idea that we have. And all of the people that were involved, all of these six strangers who were everywhere on the gradient of evolution and creationism, they all found that out. In fact, one of them even came up to me afterwards and said, I can't believe I didn't want to punch anyone in the face. <laughs> hey, it's three hours. I mean, what can you do? So now that I've said that, I want to leave you all with a quote. This comes from Emma Darwin writing to Charles Darwin. They not only communicated in person, but they also communicated through letters when Darwin was out and about, which he was a lot. And it goes a little something like this, so take it with you wherever you go. I thank you from my heart for your openness with me. And I should dread the feeling that you were concealing your opinions from the fear of giving me pain. My own dear Charlie, we now do belong to each other. And I cannot help being open with you. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, I haven't said where on the gradient of evolution and creationism I stand. Doesn't matter. Thank you.